welcome see you at usc i'm your host paige batcher tonight in studio i'm very excited we have jonathan sheck with us hi jonathan hi how are you i'm good how are you very glad to have you yeah it's nice to be here it took a little while to get here because the traffic's so bad in los angeles but it is yeah yeah we were talking about that the 405 to the 110 to the 10 well, you took to the, the 405 that's the worst the, that's worst. the worst by far <laughs> um and i did comment right away on your orioles hat it's fantastic. <laughs> I'm from Baltimore. That's a Baltimore Orioles hat. And you guys have been victorious in the Super Bowl recently? Yes, the Ravens won. I was there. You were there in person? R right on the 50-yard line. Got to watch it go down. It's amazing. amazing. Yeah. So you saw you saw the whole return at the beginning of the second half. Oh, yeah. I stood right up. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we just won the Super Bowl. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then the lights all went, pop, 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 pop. I thought for sure the plays were going to blow up. I thought a terrorist tech was coming. Well, that um, was after 20 minutes of blackout, right? It was 35 minutes of blackout. It was, it was, it, you know, it was scary stuff. And then they didn't know what was going on. The guys were stretching out on the field, and and the uh, I was with uh, the band Rascal Flats, are all my buddies. Sure. And yeah, beh and 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 behind us was the band Journey. They had uh, did a crossroads in which they did a tour the night the the night uh, um, did a concert the night before. So I had all these guys, you know, famous people around me. And uh, they had to go because they had a show. So that 35 minute break- Prevented them from prevented seeing, the, from rest seeing the, the rest of the game. And it was a great game. It was and an incredible were, game. They were all rooting for the 49ers. So they all left me. I was all by myself <laughs> at the end of the game. Just you and empty seats? Yes. <laughs> yeah, just me. What were their reactions when they saw Beyonce play? Because they're music legends and she brought down the house, Oh, right? she was great. I mean, it was great from, you know, it was just great being there. Uh, watching her we were, in the, we were up at you know fifth yard line several rows back we couldn't actually see her saw more of the monitors on each side but amazing amazing yeah well we digress a little bit but congrats on the super bowl win thanks i want to talk about your acting career you've you've been in the biz now for since 1994 as far as imbd gives you yeah. db gives you credit for and international uh, movie database Exactly. I am DB. And you've been killing it. Two, three projects a year. So I know you came from the East Coast. Talk about what it was like, your inspiration for coming here and, and starting off. You know, I, th I think it was just a dream. I had a dream and I thought I really should do something with my life that I just didn't want to live my life in, in my hometown, even though I loved my family and the people around there. I thought there was something else out there. And I took one acting class at the University of Maryland from Sam McGrady and I thought I can do this and I should do this and I finished up my exams that year and I traveled out to Los Angeles and I met a great acting teacher named Roy London and he took me under his wing and taught me how to you know started my career in act well my artistry in acting artistry I like yeah. the way you put that what were you studying at the University of Maryland I was an economics major econ yeah. business okay yeah. I was okay. taking statistics and macro, micro, <laughs> and calculus. Did too. you finish that up and said, I know exactly what I want to do now, and then came out here? I did not finish my degree. Okay. Yeah. So my how old were you when you made the trip? I think I was 18 years old. That's incredible. That's really brave. Yeah. That's really brave. W were you fully supported by your family? They were scared to death. The, you know, my dad was a Baltimore City police officer, so he had no idea what it you know what it took to be to make it in show business and he was afraid he wasn't gonna be able to help guide me or anything but it turns out that my father would write me letters pretty much every week um, and those letters were the f foundation of my success he would write me about how he would walk up a flight of stairs and he didn't know the suspect what you know was going on up there but he he said that it wasn't so much when he got there what he was scared of but it was the unknown that he was scared about. And he says, that will come up with you too. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with your endeavors, when you walk into an audition, the unknown will be the most frightening. But know that, you know, you keep God in your heart and you can get through that just like I used to walk up a flight of stairs and apprehend a suspect. Kind of good metaphor, right? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So it's the fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown. And yep. also, I guess, probably intermixed in that, I can imagine being at auditions and having the self-doubt kind of creep in there as well. Yeah, definitely. So what were some of your first roles? What sort of took hold for you right away? 
Well, the very first, I, w I had two roommates. Um, you know, we were all split in the uh, rent because, you know, we were struggling. We were just struggling actors trying to, you know, make it into business. And were you in Hollywood? It, we, yeah, we were De Detroit and uh, Olympic is where I stayed. Living but with how many mates? Two, two, two guys from Texas. Okay. Uh, Alan Mar Marshall and Michael Wilson. And one of them came home and he said, I just went out for this film. You ha you've got to go out for this film. It, it's a, a Franco Zeffirelli movie, you know, the guy who did Romeo and Juliet and Taming of the Shrew and all these, like, big, you know, Shakespearean uh, type movies. And I was like, he's like, you're f perfect for you, you know, get your monologues ready and, and go for it. And I was like, I, so I looked into it and I went to the place where it was. There was this long line. <laughs> felt like, you know, before American Idol was around, I felt like it was American Idol. You know. <laughs> I was waiting and waiting and I got there and then I, there's Franco Zeffirelli in a chair with a bunch of people, and I, I did my monologues, and they brought me back six times. On the, wow. the last time, um, they had me read a scene. I read the scene, and I left, and I got a phone call. Now, they probably saw uh, 3,000 actors in Los Angeles for that role. They, they brought two guys from Los Angeles, two guys from New York, two guys from England, two guys from France, two guys from Rome, and we all competed for this this role, the lead in this Franco Zeffirelli movie. Amazing. The other guy in Los Angeles was my roommate. Okay, so yeah, you Mike, had to battle him. Me and Mike Wilson. <laughs> and you, you, you beat him out. Yes, I won the role. I don't. I wouldn't say I would beat. I beat him out. It, they just they chose me over him. So you played it well. Yeah. When we went out there, we did a screen test and everything with big cameras and the real thing and Cinecit, uh Toss Studios and. The English actors were sensational, but they didn't have this uh, quality that I felt you know, was different about us. We brought a rawness to our material. It was fun. It was That's neat. amazing. It was a long time. So ago you hit the ground running. You you out you out acted or outperformed three thousand people, roughly thereabouts. I'm sure it was around that many. And then a couple years later, you you had the one of the leading roles in that thing you do, which was Tom Hanks. And yeah, that th I, that I I came back. Uh, my acting coach passed away. It was a really tough time. A lot of ups and downs with my acting career, which is great. Um, and uh, I had gotten a film, How to Make an American Quilt, opposite Winona mm -hmm. Ryder. I won that role. I, and, and at the same time, I did a film called The Doom Generation, where I played Xavier Red, um, a Greg Iraqi movie, independent film. And those two films got me the opportunity to be in front of Tom Hanks. So you worked alongside, what is he like? Tom? Yeah. Oh, he's the best. The best? He's simply the best. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. I like to hear that. Uh, I actually wanted to ask you about your your faith, and I, that might not be typical for a young on-camera host to ask you about, but you mentioned that fear and the fear of the unknown, and for me, thinking about your career has been very long and very successful and very continuous, but do you ever have those those doubts and those questions between projects? Well, I mean, you talk about faith, you talk about God, and mm -hmm. I've always battled with God. Like, I've had my uh, conversations with Him. Um, I've always struggled with it, um, believing in a certain way, and then reading a book and growing up and knowledge about what faith is really all about. So, but I know, I've come to realize now, in the place that I am now, that all I need to do is keep God in my heart and I will make it, just like my father wrote all, so many years ago in that letter. And I think that with anybody, if you find faith, knowing that there's something greater out there than yourself, that when you walk into an audition, it's not necessarily you. That if you don't have the confidence in yourself, you put the confidence in something greater and know that your actions are the thing that will guide you through. So that's kind of where I keep my faith. That's amazing. Do you ever... I guess I want to also ask you about. So the, you played a the role of Judas, yeah, right in a in a made for TV movie, which I know was pretty controversial at the time. <laughs> yeah. But what was that like? What kind of role <coughs> did that take on you? What, what kind of what was the preparation like? How did it differ from other roles? Uh, well, there, I mean, you actors are artists. Uh, I never felt like I really actually I talked about winning roles, but I really never felt that I won them. They were just kind of granted to me by the acting God. <laughs> okay. um, so that, th so that I, w I just fit it right. I just fit that role. And th at that time in my life, I had, a, I had a deal with something 
um, that Judas was dealing with. It was my struggle with faith and struggle with God and dealing with my understanding of Jesus Christ. And um, so I went out to the desert as I played that role. It was written by Tom Fontana. If you guys remember, he did, uh, the, I think it was Oz on HBO. He wrote Homicide and he's okay. a fantastic writer. Um, so it was a little different, a little bit odd, and we were kind of looking at the soul of uh, and Judas. And the message for, from the filmmakers was that if you, you know, it's all about forgiveness. So if you could forgive the betrayer of Christ, you could you could forgive anyone in your life. So that was really kind of what that film was all about. But when I went there, I would walk. I walk. I was in the desert thirty days and thirty nights with Jesus Christ, and we smoked a lot of cigarettes. <laughs> That's an amazing story. It's true. <laughs> it was fun. So you talk about taking on that forgiveness for yourself. And at the same time, I hear a lot, the artistry of acting is a lot about separating who you are personally with your character. You're, you're acting as your character. You're channeling that and embodying that. Was there ever crossover to the point where you had to consciously think about it? Or, I mean, how do you approach the role, I guess, is more my question. Well, I think one of the found founding things that I really I th think that makes great work is when you identify with whatever the character is struggling with and what his problem is. And that you have all these exterior things, you know, like voice, di um, you know, the way he speaks or the way, you know, his dialect or the way he looks, if he has a mustache or if he doesn't. All these things on the outside, but they kind of come from the inside. But if you can personalize and find your own personal struggle within that, every single day you're trying to grow out of that experience. Um, like, you know, I was struggling with my battle with my upbringing of, of, you know, being Catholic. And so when I would talk to, you know, Jesus Christ every day, I was really talking to Jesus Christ every day. Like, hey, is this for real? Are you real? Do I believe in you? Yeah, so I, that was a blessing with that. And I find that with every role, I find that I'm giving a role every single time where I have to deal with that. That's exceptional. Well, off the top of your head, I mean, what has been the role where at that moment in time in your life, that was what you needed to deal with? Or has it pretty much been all of them? Is it serendipitous? A lot of them were really kind of strange. Uh, but I did a film called Little Chenier. It was an independent. I love independent. I love writer and directors. It's my favorite thing. Um, they're starting to become a rare breed um, because actually films become a rare breed. Uh, <laughs> but so Little Chenier, I had just went through the hardest breakup of my life, and my character was, had just broken up with the girl that he loves, and he couldn't deal with it. And I had an actor opposite me. He said, uh, "She's not your girl anymore, Bo. She's not your girl." <laughs> and it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to hear before in my life. Wow. And it, 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 he, his name is Clifton Collins. He became my best friend after that. But when he said it, he meant it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk more about that when we come back. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll talk about your upcoming film. Uh, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hmm. 